Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Thursday, September 15th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Toledo game is in two days. The game against Michigan in 72 days. I am back here at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center with someone who's here with a decent amount at this point. Uh, Buckeye Huddle's Tony Gerdeman. We just wrapped up a extensive series of interviews, I think nine different players mm-hmm. on Wednesday night, previewing the Toledo game, talking about the season in general, little recap of Arkansas State, little of this, little of that. Uh, you got to talk to, we're going to start with Jack Sawyer. What the heck? Why okay. not? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start with Jack Sawyer because he was, you know, I think the defensive line and the front seven was kind of a lot of the conversation. So um, Jack Sawyer kind of playing a new position this year. It is, you know, you might say they made it right for him because it's the Jack position and that's his name. But when he does really well, then it won't be the Jack position anymore, which is kind of confusing, but that's yeah. okay. Uh, how does he liking the, you know, be, not just being a hand-in-the-dirt edge rusher? Yeah, he does like standing up. He said that. And I do wonder, though, when he does become a full Leo, will he have to change his name? Yes. Well, then there you go. He did. He was asked, like, you know, when you can't – because the, you can't become the Leo until you know everything and you're the king of the jungle. And he was asked about how that happens. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. You know, he just do, does what he's asked to do now. And he does like walking around and, you know, kind of prowling a bit and looking for his opening and – doing what he's told in that respect as he's playing a quasi linebacker. But he also said he was a linebacker all the way up until high school. So he, he likes that aspect of it. And just you know, even stuff like you're not necessarily getting to the quarterback or to the ball, but you're freeing up other guys to do it. We saw that you know, several times against Arkansas State where you're just one piece of the puzzle and then the puzzle works perfectly and then everybody celebrates. So he's having a good time with that. Uh, Tyreek Williams was walking by at one point and Jack Sawyer said, you know, yelled at him like, Hey, Tyleek, are you going to get a sack before me? And so we'll see if uh, what happens there. Eventually, one of those guys is going to get one. That is a kind of vicious self-own there. Yep, well. I mean, and, and, you know, th- that is they are competitive in that room. And, you know, there is one guy who is very clearly winning that competition right now, Mike Hall. And what was one of the things that was interesting was you said there actually is a competition. Yeah, well, and that was something that uh, I don't know if it was in the spring or early fall where I think those two and some other guys have had, you know, Friendly trash talk about who would be having more sacks. I think uh, you know, Mike Hall had said that it would be him, and Jack Sawyer said, no way. And then now, now as somebody brought it up today, Jack Sawyer was like, yeah, I knew somebody was going to bring this up, but it's okay. <laughs> you know, everybody's happy that Mike, Mike Hall is doing well because it helps everybody. And, you know, uh, who wins in this competition, Tom? Everybody. Except for opposing quarterbacks, I would say. If, well, not everybody. Not everyone. But yeah, everyone in scarlet and gray. Yes. Um, Jack Sawyer was also asked about someone that we got to talk to for the first time in you know this kind of a setting, uh, Caden Curry. And you know you go back a year, and JT Tuimolowau and Jack Sawyer are the sort of shiny new hopes of the defensive line, and everyone's so excited to see them. And now it's like those are the guys who've played for a while. What is the new? Who is the new and shiny thing? Well, that is Caden Curry. I mean. It sure seems like, uh, you know, Caden Curry is sort of on his way. This is, you know, I always kind of judge some of this based on when do we actually get to talk to some of these guys? Because yep. that, that's mm-hmm. like, that's the moment when they trust these guys. They trust him to not come out and say, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, Toledo's terrible. We're going to beat them by 57 points. They trust him to do that. They trust him to play. You know, this is, I, my barometer, I kind of, it's like the, uh, the Mendoza line for that is the Chris Olave line, which was like the middle of October or so. Yeah. And Caden Curry beat that by a month. And, you know, I mean, there's other reasons to think Caden Curry might be on track for big things. But, you know, it seems like Caden Curry might be on track for big things. Yeah, I would agree. Jack, sorry, mentioned he just really likes how hardworking he is. Everybody was happy to see him make plays. And, you know, you, if you get into the game and you make a play, it doesn't matter when. I, like, it shows the focus that is necessary. Being out here for interviews, say what you want. It shows maturity, like you said. It shows coaches trust him to say the right things. And uh, we keep talking about seeing him more and more. I, I'm, I don't know that this is necessarily a sign of that. I think playing well against Arkansas State and playing well in, in practice is, is a sign that we're going to see more and more of him. But, you know, I, I think he's kind of a, not overly quiet, but right now he's just keeping his head down. And, you know, he was out here for interviews. I don't know that he really – said too much other than every standard thing you would expect him to say you know i'm just want to help the team just you know doing what i'm told and 
keeping my head down and learning the plays and all that the stuff that you want every player to say if you're a coach and the stuff that you don't want every player to say if you're <laughs> if you're covering them and writing about them how many games in a, how many games at a time should they take it probably just one but mm. I, would, I would like it you know minimum three and a half yeah Caden Curry said he was happy to seize the opportunity wants to be able to contribute I mean that's that's what you're supposed to say when you're a freshman how often do we say boy that you know so and so is really really showing more of his personality now like Zach, Zach Harrison mm. Freshman yeah. year was kind of very quiet, didn't say much, and now you get Zach Harrison, and he's like in full Zach Harrison mode. Yeah. And um, he was—he uh, we didn't even talk to him today, and he was part of a uh, kind of a funny interaction. We'll get to that a little later. Um, speaking of taking it one game at a time, Dewan Jones, we uh, do we have a rundown for the show? Am I just ping ponging around as my brain thinks of stuff? As I mean, these are smooth transitions until I interrupt them with this sort of inner monologue. I can interrupt some if you want. No, I'm doing just fine, thank you. Speaking of taking it one game at a time, Dewan Jones was asked about night games. What, you know, what do you what do you like about night games? Night games makes it make it showtime, and he said, you know, it, it also will help prepare you for other night games. You play a night game against Toledo, that's going to help prepare you for uh, you know a night game against Wisconsin the next week. Now, now we have to, you know, we can only be thinking about the one game at a time, but it's definitely going to help us for the game after. It's like, so you are aware there's a game after this one. You take it one month at a time, Tom. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I mean, I think that's realistically like you got to say the right things and you you're focused and all that kind of stuff but you you do kind of you have to know they have at least an eye ahead on Wisconsin at this yeah, point yeah but also with that eye you know like well first first we got to take care of Toledo mm -hmm. and treat it with respect that way it makes the Wisconsin game easier like you can you can look ahead while also staying present and making the most of that opportunity, Tom. I don't like the way you're trying to throw these players under the bus. Definitely not. I mean, Dewan Jones, he said all the right things. Mm -hmm. Plus, you need a very, very... You would need a large bus. Yes. yes. Um, it's going to need a bigger bus. Speaking of Zach Harrison and Zach Harrison's personality, G. Scott was talking. Zach Harrison walks up and... Um, is trying to like bait reporters mm -hmm. into asking him, you know, you know, how, how is your blocking going? How, how is your block, your your pass blocking go, been going, and your run blocking been going in practice and all that kind of stuff? And he's asking people, and he's, you know, he asked Keith, who's one of the AV guys for Ohio State. He's like, I'm not a reporter. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not asking questions. So uh, eventually, he did, and Zach Harrison, I believe, was the one who actually asked the question at the end. And then G. Scott went into a long answer about how going against this kind of defense. You get better every day, and it's like going against your older brother in practice, and then it's like going up against your younger brother in games. So, that's a pretty cool answer. It's like uh, it's like Zach Harrison knew that he might get uh, you know some flattering press clippings out of that. It was well done. That's that's how you uh, this is how you manipulate the media. Sometimes you just have to be the media to manipulate. Well, the media. it's very honestly. Let's be honest. It's very very easy to manipulate the media. <laughs> the media is here to be manipulated. Basically, that's why we show up. Um, more from G. Scott. Said, you know, he he talked a lot about blocking. He has not caught, a, he did not catch a pass last week. Uh, he was targeted once, but didn't catch a pass. Um, you know, he, he did all the questions. You always get questions for him as a former wide receiver. Do you think of yourself as a tight end? Are you are you you know are you fully a tight end at this point? He said, you know, he is fully a tight end in his mind, but you know he knows he still has a lot of work to do. And he said, that's true. You know, you get to the NFL, you still have work to do. You can't you can't stop working. You can't stop improving. But in his mind, yes, he is officially a tight end. He said his mindset is to put someone on the ground every play. Like, if you know if he's blocking, he, he his goal is to put someone on the ground every single time. He's a really mature guy because mm -hmm. he answers the same questions every single time he's out here, and it's. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, until we start seeing, I guess, it, the catches, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you, oh, well, he's mm -hmm. catching the ball, so now mm -hmm. we know he's good. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, he, he shows a lot of patience and maturity by just continue. And, and he's answering these questions sincerely because he, he believes them as well. Mm -hmm. It's like, you mm -hmm. know, I, need, I still need to work on this. I need to work on this. Passes will come. And he was, he was also asked about, we talked about this at some point. I can't remember if this came up during postgame on Saturday or during interviews on Tuesday. But, you know, Arkansas State essentially – changed their look uh, because yes. of G. Scott, because G. Scott, they were kind of acting as a defense as if G. Scott was a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And then when they saw G. Scott blocking the way he was, that changed sort of what they could do because that changed what, you know, the look that they felt mm -hmm. they were getting. And that, you know, that took them out of a look that they were getting some good results yeah. with. And G. Scott said that he didn't realize that until Coach Mick pointed it out. But it was, you know, when, when that got pointed out to him, like that was – that showed respect to him as a blocker, which he was very mm -hmm. proud of. Yeah, no, that's a big moment. That's where this is a guy who is seen by what he hasn't been able to do yet. 
and yet the opponent sees him by what he's doing, and they adjust. So I think that's very significant for him. Just one of these things that you kind of you put on your personal shelf that, okay, I, I'm, I'm doing something, and, and I'm being recognized by the opponent, which is probably the best people to recognize you, you know? Yeah, the opponent is never going to say anything just to be nice. If yeah. you're doing something, you know, mm -hmm. we talk about in recruiting all the time, watch what they do, not what they say. Pay attention to what they do, not what they say. Well, that's... You're, if you're paying attention to what the opponent is doing, that's what the opponent really thinks of you. So yeah, that is, that was kind of interesting. Uh, Tanner McAllister, he was, he talked a good bit. Speaking of manipulating the media, talked about, uh, you know, how different this was, and you know, was this, w was he prepared for what being a Buckeye is like on a week-to-week -week basis? And he said, you know, at Oklahoma State, I mean, that's a Power Five program. They won a, they won the Fiesta Bowl last year. This is not, you know, he didn't come from, uh, you know, Ball State. He came from a Power Five program, Fiesta Bowl winning program and he said you know after practice like well sometimes there'd be a reporter or something there to ask you questions or whatever but uh yeah nothing nothing like this as he's sitting at a table with microphones and you know five tv cameras in front of him and and all of that he you know i think this is he's really enjoying the experience i think he's he's liking uh liking what he's doing he's someone who he said you know we, we talked a little bit about confidence on the defense and you know he said uh First of all, every time I step on the field, we go with the idea of not letting them score. Like, that's the goal. You know, it, it, like just like G. Scott wants to put guys on the ground every single play, Tanner, McC Tanner McAllister wants to not give up any points every time they play. Um, he's, you know, he knows Jim Knowles better than anyone else, else in this building because he played with Knowles uh, in, uh, at Oklahoma State. He said, I'm sure Knowles is bothered by not having turnovers, but I'm sure he's more happy about us keeping the offenses uh, from putting the ball in the end zone. And, you know, he said, if the defensive line keeps playing like they are, those turnovers are going to come. That, that, the, the front seven, he just talked on and on about how impressive the front seven was and how, you know, it, he said it wasn't boring, but the front seven was just kind of, they're, they're just like watching the front seven going, wow, these guys are incredible. Well, yeah, and if you're forcing a bunch of three and outs mm -hmm. or, you know, four and outs or whatever, you're not getting a lot of opportunities for turnovers. And, you know, I, I think that's okay as well. Three and out, essentially the same as a turnover. As long as you, you know, the, the punt changes things a little <laughs> bit, but just get the ball back, as, as Jim Knowles says. And uh, Tanner McAllister also, speaking of knowing Jim Knowles, said he's going to be aggressive. He's going to put us on an island. He knows sometimes it's going to lead to big plays, but he trusts us. You know, I like being in an aggressive, mm -hmm. you know, competitive defense. I mean, this is, we talked about this a little bit on yep. the Wednesday episode of Buckeye Weekly, anticipating what these guys would say, correctly anticipating, good for us. But, you know, I think this is the kind of defense, they're a defense that, that's aggressive, which is fun for these guys. They're having success, which is fun for these guys. Like this is this is the kind of defense that you would think these guys really want to be in. Yeah, I remember a few weeks ago talking to Ronnie Hickman about it. It's like, you know, what's your favorite part about this defense? And he said they let us make plays. And you can, you know, that can be anybody. Like, and you, you saw with Ross Fulton's pieces on Buckeye Huddle this week, where they do so much disguising and you know, having all five defensive backs at one level mm -hmm. and, and showing different things but then allowing any one of those guys can come in and do something you know open the season with a corner blitz didn't go well but it shows you the aggression mm -hmm. that they're willing to take and you know corners love to blitz so mm -hmm. you know hey let's let's do it right away and you know, the it's the kind of defense that is fun and as Jim Knowles says the more fun they have the more creative it, it is the more engaged the players are and then you can just continue to give them more and more and more and do whatever you want essentially because they they'll They'll listen, they'll take it in, and they'll be able to put what's in practice and what's in the classroom on the, on the field. Yeah, and and um, I guess oh, well, let's let's first move to Emeka Abuka because mm -hmm. you talked to Emeka Abuka. The way, just so you know, if you're wondering, they have three interview tables set up, and I'm at one, and Kevin's at one, and Tony's at one. So I'm talking to guys. I talked to Tanner McAllister. I don't think you heard anything from Tanner no. McAllister. I heard almost nothing out of Emeka Abuka. I was there for a question or two just while mm -hmm. we were between interviews at my table. So what was the most interesting thing you heard from Mecca Abuka? Well, there, there's two things, and I asked him the, what's, like, the most difficult part about moving from one receiver spot to the other because he started the season expecting to play more outside than inside. Then Jackson goes down, and so he has to move inside. Now he may be moving back outside a little bit, but he's going to be playing, you know, wherever. But he said the most difficult thing is when you go from inside to outside, it's the guys you're going against. And you don't know how corners have been playing the outside receivers for the entire game. So, you know, that's it's a learning process, and it takes a couple of plays before you know exactly how this guy is going to play you rather than, 
you know, uh, Marvin Harrison has an entire quarter of dealing with a corner, knowing what how he's going to be played. And Emeka just gets out there for one play, not knowing exactly what to expect, but still having to do your job. And so that's like the, the most difficult thing. But they cross train and, you know, they they know all of the positions, but you don't know how guys are going to defend you. So that's really the difficult part there. And then Tom, you know, we saw Chip train him back there returning kicks last week. Mm -hmm. I asked Emeka, so did you, are you not returning kicks now just as a way to alleviate the load? Because you're, you're, you're returning punts now, you're receiving, you know, you, you, you don't have Jackson out there. So, you know, is this just a way to alleviate? And he didn't even want to talk about his role. He said, just wait, chip train him. He, nobody understands how fast he is. Nobody wants to tackle a 230 pound freight train and expect him to take, he expects him to take one back. If he gets an opportunity, he thinks it's going to go the distance. And uh, what he said, like the scout team doesn't like tackling him when they do it. It's fun to watch him. And so here we are, Tom. If if uh, if we get an opportunity to see Chip train him, actually take it out. Emeka Abuka has called his shot. And how I ask, like how often have you ever seen a, a linebacker return a kick before? And he's like, no. But this guy, when you watch it, it's special. So it would it be would it be pretty crazy if the first kickoff return touchdown at Ohio State in like what a dozen years is done by a linebacker? Yeah, that that would be uh, pretty pretty historic in a couple different ways. You, you walked over me towards the end of interviews with this kind of funny look on your face, and you're like, I know what my first bold prediction is going to be on the uh, Buckeye Weekly Bold Predictions episode coming Thursday uh, on the Buckeye Weekly podcast feed. But what was your first bold prediction going to be? Uh, Chip Trainum will uh, return a kickoff for a touchdown this week. I, you said that, and then you explained why, and I was thinking, I wonder if there's like a podcast equivalent of insider trading because that feels <laughs> like you're you're trading on insider information before it was available to the public and should you be in prison look i don't know i'm not i'm not the authorities but yes Fair, i did call dibs though <laughs> you did so you legally bind like that alleviates all of it that. is standard shotgun rules if Correct. you are in sight of a uh computer that you make a podcast with you, you can call shotgun so I, there's nothing i can do uh but Five minutes ago, I had a great transition when you mentioned Emeka Igbuka going inside out. Mm -hmm. You know who else went inside out this year? Paris Johnson, from guard to tackle. Look at you. He, uh, Donovan Jackson was, was someone else we talked to today. He uh, talked about being next to Paris Johnson, where you know Donovan Jackson is now playing guard where Paris Johnson was, other side of the line, but he's next to Paris Johnson now. He said he is trying to pick do uh, Paris Johnson's brain on whatever he can do. What can he do to get better? Like, when he does something wrong, he asked Paris Johnson, what can I do to get better? When he does something right, he asked Paris Johnson, what can I do even better next time to get better? It, it is crazy to me, number one, that the first, you know, first year, two, two starts at left tackle, uh, you know, first year starter at tackle, uh, Paris Johnson, who feels like he just got here not mm -hmm. that long ago, mm -hmm. is now the crafty veteran who the young players are going to for, uh, you know, to, for the, uh, you know, for, for advice. But uh, that was, that was, I thought, kind of interesting. Uh, anything else from your interview table? No, or? I just had Jack Sawyer to Mecca, and that was about uh, the extent okay. of what they had to say. All right, and Lathan Ransom, he was at the middle oh, yeah, table. Yes. I was I was over there for a little bit, uh, and you were as well. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I thought was kind of interesting that he said that when I was over there was he knew he couldn't practice all spring, so he just spent the spring focused on film, watching film, knowing all the parts of the defense, understanding you know not only where he needed to be but why, really understanding the whole defense. Said that's made a big uh, impact for him. He talked about you know how he and Josh Proctor are kind of similar and kind of different, but you know he there was there was about 95% of the answer was how they were similar. So you know I mean they have they are kind of in complementary roles there, sort of sharing time at that spot. But you know that they they he, he seemed it seemed like he thought they had more in common than uh, than different. Was there anything else from him that you thought was interesting? Yeah, well he was talking about when he broke his leg in the Rose Bowl, and afterwards they're telling him you know like it's like seven months, and then. You know, you can adjust that based on what you're able to do. And he told Adam Stewart, their lead physical therapist, that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have the fastest recovery from a compound broken leg that you've ever seen. And I don't, I don't know if that's the fastest. I, I can't imagine you've had many, many faster than that one. And he said every time he's on the field, every time he steps on the field, he thinks about everything he's gone through. Not, he doesn't think about the broken leg. He's thinking about all of the work that he's put in to get to this spot. So like, he, he definitely appreciates that more. He said he got a little emotional before the Notre Dame game being mm -hmm. out there because nobody expected him to play. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know if he would play this season until maybe later in the year. And, and so he's out there, nobody, you know. That's just an incredible story to be out there that quickly and then to play that well and to be a necessary part of the defense. Yeah. 
And, you know, one more thing, speaking of being a little emotional for the Notre Dame game, Tanner McAllister talked about how overwhelming it was, just how cool it was <laughs> having LeBron there. He said, I had a LeBron fathead on my wall in, uh, you know, as a, as a kid, and then, you know, got to meet LeBron before the game, and LeBron's there. You know, you go from you're cheering for LeBron to LeBron's cheering for you. That's, like, that's, you know, it, we, we talk about, you know, all the, the celebrities who are there and, you know, the state of the whole, the whole state of Ohio is watching and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes there's stuff like that that's like, oh, hmm, this is even even in a year filled with lots of stuff that's you know pretty cool and pretty pretty unique. That was something that really resonated with uh, with him as well. So uh, that is going to do it for today's show. We will uh, be back. We'll have uh, a like Ryan Day lightning round, uh, kind of ten minutes of uh, questions and answers with him. Come up a little later on Thursday. We'll have the Buckeye Weekly. Old prediction show in which Tony has already called shotgun, which is deeply disappointing to me. It's not going to happen, so it's okay. But just, I'm, it's fine. Uh, so we will have that coming up uh, tomorrow's morning. Or tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow's Buckeyes this morning. Uh, tomorrow morning, I know my name. Buckeyes tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's Buckeyes tomorrow morning will uh, feature uh, Ross Fulton, who you mentioned earlier, talking about some of the stuff you, uh, some of the stuff you talked about with the uh, yeah. five and a line defense and the. Uh, the, uh, the safeties and disguise and coverages, but uh, plenty about the uh, the offense as well. Asked him about Denzel Burke, his evaluation of Denzel Burke, something he wrote about this week where, you know, what are the line the run, running backs doing that might be kind of hurting the running game, just a little something they're doing that might be hurting the running game. So that uh, we already recorded that one, so that's a, a really good conversation. You have that to look forward to tomorrow. So that'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.